Thylacine architectures are becoming more complex and with the advent of edge computing looming near, managing facilities are becoming ever harder. To speak more about that, I've got here with me Victor Avla, Director and Senior Research Analyst at Schneider Electric Data Center Science Center. Victor, thanks a lot for talking for, to Frontline. Thanks for having me. Um, when we look into infrastructure management, data center infrastructure management, what are the main challenges at the moment? Well, we have some challenges that current data center management systems just haven't addressed very well. You know, you have this idea of all these alarms coming out at you. Some of them are repeat <coughs> alarms. They, they, it's hard to triage those alarms. And I think uh, we can do better in terms of uh, telling, guiding our customers and what those alarms actually mean. What should you do? Um, should you take any evasive action? Uh, or is it just more of inform informative type of alarms? That's just one. I mean, then we have this idea that we have three separate systems uh, to manage data centers. You typically have a BMS, the building management system, uh, electrical power management system, and then you have the DSIM uh, for, for the IT space. And those are they typically individual uh, systems with their own data silos. And uh, we think that, the, again, this is a challenge if you're trying to get insights from your entire data center. Because uh, it's not three separate systems, it's one big system. Um, so those <coughs> just are just a few, I think, key challenges. But there, there, are, there are plenty more um, that, that we, we talk about in our white papers. OK. And then in terms of the approach to help manage this infrastructure, um, how do you get to that stage where you can actually manage it properly? So do you install sensors down the aisle? Um, how do you gather the data? How do you harness the data? Where mm -hmm. th does the data go? So what's the approach here? Uh, well, again, traditionally, you, you do have these connected products that, uh, you know, they could be UPSs, cooling systems like chillers or an air-cooled uh, system, uh, you know, leak sensors. All of these things do report their data up into something, um, and that something traditionally is a data center infrastructure management system that, um, you know, monitors the data, but unfortunately, it's only the data for your data center. Um, where we're going is to have a cloud-based system that uh, not only takes the data from your data center, but aggregates data from data centers all around the world. Okay. And that, that's where I think the promise lies. So you can get your whole data center network into one database sort of? And exactly. Then from there. Okay. Right. I mean, the, the power of large numbers in statistics is that the more data you have, the more confidence you have mm -hmm. in insights from that data. And that's where Schneider wants to go with, with its cloud-based uh, mm. management system. What's been like the most forward-looking sort of uh, experiment that you've seen in the industry? Not maybe just from Schneider, but mm. from a play in the industry. The most forward uh, movement they've made in terms of managing the infrastructure um, with intelligence. Well, you know, I think about a commercial <coughs> from IBM. Uh, they, they use Watson as their, let's say, their machine learning platform. And it's a commercial where you know, a, a repair person comes in uh, to the front desk of a large building and tells a security guard that they're here to fix the elevator. But the elevator appears to be working just fine. And uh, he looks at the repair guy and says, well, it's working, so no, we don't need you. Well, I'm here to fix it. Well, it's not broken. Well, it will be it broken will break. in a few days. <laughs> it's going to break tomorrow. And so uh, it's a kind of a funny commercial, but mm. it, it's, it's true in that if you have enough data, you'll have high confidence that these uh, components will fail at a certain period of time and it gives uh, data center managers a heads up. It gives them an ability to schedule um, downtime, not unplanned downtime. You want planned downtime if you need to replace something or perhaps you don't need to any downtime at all to replace it. But the point is you, you're given an opportunity to react to it. It's not like you wait for the thing to fail and then scurry around trying to keep the systems up. So it, it, that's just one <coughs> example that is really telling in that commercial. Mm, okay, predicting the future. Predicting uh, the future, basically, so yeah. If you had to predict the future, what would be the data center of the future? What would the data center look like? We're talking about robots, we're talking about sci-fi sort of stuff now. Uh, <coughs> well, perhaps. Um, you know, you got people experimenting with robots and warehouses, right? So why not robots to take servers out of Iraq? I don't know. Mm. But no, th I mean, in the short term, I do see uh, data center management being cloud-based, uh, aggregating data from across data centers <coughs> around the world and having a data lake where all that data resides. And then from there, that's when I think, you know, I get really excited about <coughs> the future of what we can tell from that data. Um, you know, we've even played around in the past with our, you know, with our current, um, you know, let's say 
on-prem DSIM package where we had a model, and the model is an efficiency model of a data center, and based on that model that is calibrated to your data center, we could tell, you know, a year down the road or two years down the road, if you're diverging from that PUE mm. curve that you should have at that day with that temperature outside, we should be able to tell. And um, it turns out that's very realistic today, but what we want to do is we want to add more confidence in that model, and that's where that data comes in. The more data we have, like I said, statistically speaking, you become more confident mm. in the outcomes. Okay, and then one of the things Schneider has been working on, and you're very vocal about, is ecostructure. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to quickly explain what ecostructure is and how the app is developing and how many users you've got now, uh, and what Schneider is learning from it, actually, mm. sometimes from the perspective of the provider yeah. instead of the user? So, so we got about 100,000 devices on the uh, system right now that we're monitoring. I'm not sure exactly how much data that equates into, okay. uh, but it's, it's certainly early days for us. Um, I think we have uh, a long way to go to... Uh, gather more steam. Um, you know, this is only a recent uh, offer, uh, not available throughout the world, but it's um, it's definitely something that I see is is a game changer in the industry. Um, we're uh, we're trying hard to uh, you know experiment with uh, this machine learning type of thing. Uh, in fact, the CTO office has its own uh, small team that mm -hmm. was built around this idea of machine learning and. What does that mean, and can we get a little bit of a, of a data set and play around with what insights we can get from that? So, um, yeah, I think I think things are pretty exciting. Um, we got we we're learning, and I think it's going to be a, a really um, compelling mm -hmm. ride for customers. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then I know you're behind a lot of the white papers that Schneider does, mm -hmm. and there are quite a lot of them. What will be the one that you pick out, pick up at the moment, and you say this is what's going to happen in the next 12 months? This is what people should know about. Uh, what's going to be the major disruption in the industry in the next 12 months that you see? Well, like <coughs> I said in, in previous talks, we can't talk about data center infrastructure management without talking about cybersecurity. Okay. This is like the main obstacle to anyone considering a cloud-based solution because cloud-based solution, by definition, means that some of that data has to come out and in of, the, yeah. of, your, of your network um, or at least... To come out, you need uh, you need a port open mm. in your in your data center network, and so we wrote a white paper on um, it basically describes our secure development lifecycle mm. approach to cybersecurity, and um, there's we learned quite a bit of what we're doing in the product development stage, um, but we were actually told to not put so much information in there. It's 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 an interesting world of cybersecurity because it's kind of like good cat. You know, good guy, bad guy, and we're trying to um, kind of keep um, you know Some information from each mm. other. That's kind of how it works. But I'd say that that's a really good paper if you're interested mm. in in this cloud-based approach and, mm. and the promises that it holds. Um, yeah, you probably should look at what a vendor's doing in terms of cybersecurity. Mm. I think that's a really important one. Um, and also, I, you know, I like to be real about these things. And one of the other <laughs> real things that we're learning is. There have been a lot of um, instances where customers go in with a lot of zest to, to d adopt, mm. uh, at least in the traditional sense, traditional DSIM, uh, on-prem DSIM, and th you know we've had it, we've we've seen cases where customers just quite frankly fail at it, um, okay. whether because they didn't have the right maturity, the right processes in place, uh, they you know they spent way too much, way too fast, and then there was a lot of pressure to get things done, mm. and um, you know I just think. The, the paper that explains these things uh, is a good one. It's a, I forget the exact title, but it's um, you know, pitfalls of uh, mm. data center infrastructure management. Do you, do you think people know how to deal with failure when those sort of things happen? Or you still see a lot of amateurish um, sort of reactions when it comes to failure, like, oh, we failed, everything is ruined. Um, do these companies, do these people have exit, exit strategies, for example? Um, I don't failures? think they have exit strategies going in. I, th I think, mm. unfortunately, I think some some <coughs> in some cases they do develop an exit strategy, and actually one comes to mind. I'm not exactly sure what they ended yeah. up doing, but it was a large colo. They adopted a DSIM package, it cost a lot of money, and it ended up not scaling as well as they thought it was. Okay. So scale is a big one. They had a, I want to say they had close to a million or maybe more data points that they had to monitor. Was this an American company? 
Uh, I believe so. Okay. Uh, I believe they're based <clears throat> in the U.S. Uh, but it was just kind of sad, right? Because you know the person's like, I if I had known what I know today, I would have spent that money on developing my own homegrown version. Um, now that that comes with its risks as well, but. I think um, <clears throat> I think that the pitfalls of adopting DSM are very important, and I think we need to be honest with ourselves mm -hmm. about how mature we are and how quickly we, we can go in and, and adopt these things. And that's why you know in in, in the talk today I, I talked about you know having dinner with uh, a colleague from uh, from a co-location that took those steps you know took those small steps and it ended up working out pretty well. Mm -hmm. It was a small budget. Uh, you know, baby steps, implementing it, kind of, you know, grassroots adoption and buy-in from facility managers. And I think that was a, a, good, um, uh, a good example of how you have a successful DSIM rollout. Okay, which is thanks a lot for talking to me. Um, don't forget you can follow Data Economy on Facebook, Twitter and LinkedIn. And also visit the website on www.data-economy.com.